Hi guys, it's Marie Lone here. I'm about to get started another drawing for you guys. Um, somebody contacted me and said that they wanted me to basically draw dreads for them and show them just basically how to do it. I'm going to get started. I think I'm going to get started just by, what's this? This is a 4H Derwent graphic pencil. Um, I just grabbed it because it was the closest one to me. It's not as though you need to do it with a 4H. Um, I'm gonna, it's just of a guy standing to the side. Um, I'm gonna get a rough idea of whereabouts his dreads are. Now, I'm gonna freehand this guys, but um, who knows? I actually have no idea how I'm gonna pull this off. I'm just gonna dive in like I would with any commission portrait and see how we get on. Now, the back of them are there, but they go down at an angle like this. By the way, guys, if you're trying to draw something freehand, um, something that helps me, I mean, you guys probably do it anyway, but something that helps me, um, just to get the right angle of, of, of the lines, I think, if you imagine a straight line going through the drawing, or even put your pencil down, and then put your pencil up against the, the, the reference image. And then you kind of judge from that straight line at what angle it goes to about here, I think. So that's how I judge. Um, it's all in your head. You just gotta pay attention to the little things. There are so many little techniques to, to make it less complicated. Like if you grid a picture, you have all the grid lines crossing. Um, there's been times where I'm drawing something and in, in one of the squares, it will have so much complicated little lines that it's really hard to judge. So what I do is inside of the square, I picture a dot right in the middle and then I try and imagine how close those things are to that dot. So that's kind of how I judge. What's going on? Right, now they go down at an angle quite like this. And I think from that part here, the length of that, that part goes down to about here. It's about double, just about two and a half of the length of that. So I'll say to about there. And like I said, it's just a rough line. It looks to me like there's one, I love that one. Right at the end, it's got some little curls to it. It's so beautiful. Just coming out like that. And there's actually one dread. That's actually one dread there. Or one lock, whatever you want to call them. And take that up so I've just got to make it a little bit more complicated for myself but anyhow down like that and there's that dread so I'm gonna give myself a little guideline and oh, I'm gonna look forward to drawing that little bit it's even got a little curl by itself at the bottom you can't see the hair that's holding it on so cute mm -hmm. okay why am I getting all specific with this there's a guideline let me stop being silly I'm just you know when you overthink stuff I think I'm overthinking it a bit um, okay, so there's a little bulk there from a dread that's twisted over the other side. So I'm gonna just come around here. Now there's one dread that's sticking out. It's kind of twisting over. All the others are going back, but this one is going over to the side. Now what I want to do is just, just judge it from there. And is it near this? It ends just about here, a bit lower, but there. So I want to um, use this one as a guideline again because the way how this picture is, you can actually see his shoulder. So um, you can't really see his face. I could draw his face just uh, between the dreads. We'll see how we get on. Because this is supposed to be a dread video, so. Or locks, I should call them locks. Just all my life, it's just a dread, you know, the dreadlocks, that's what we've always called them.
start with my Conte Air Palette. Too big. Let's see if I can show you guys. Let's start with this. Let me sharpen it. Really strange sitting here with it in silence. It really is. I have to say, I've been really enjoying doing these videos for YouTube and um, got some really good feedback so far. The reason why I decided to do YouTube in the end was just because I couldn't answer everyone's questions before and um, also I was trying to sell commission portraits and every time, so I had to answer every message and then it would be someone asking me another question. And I wanted to answer people because I know what it's like. I remember the frustration when I don't know how to do something or I'm looking for another way or I've seen another artist do it and I think, how do they do it? So um, I would always answer, but it took up a lot of my time. And I've just decided, you know what? I've got a YouTube channel, you know. People always say to me, you should teach art, you should teach art. But um, really, I don't really consider myself te uh, not teachable. Um, I don't know if I'm capable of being a teacher because, well, I do now. I mean, obviously I can teach you guys what I know, but um, because I'm self-taught, I've always thought, well, I don't really know the correct terms for things. And But people have always said to me, so what? You know, you can still teach, but mm, because I don't really, I taught myself. So really I just thought, well, YouTube is less pressure. It's more like, you know, this is how I do it. You know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, don't do it or don't watch, you know, so. Um, there's no real pressure this way and I get to give people answers and I don't have to answer the same question again I've actually had a few people ask me um, about the masking tape how I use the masking tape without ripping the paper and it's been so nice to just be able to say to them go and look at my um, YouTube channel and my YouTube video that says my art materials and then some of them are contacting me back saying thank you so much and I think why didn't I just do this ages ago but I know why. I didn't want my voice on camera. I was really, really shy and I just thought, no, Marie, I can't do it. I never thought I'd be able to do that, but one day I just woke up and was like, you know what? I'm gonna make some YouTube videos. Simple. Why not? So basically, why am I even doing that? I'm just getting an idea of where these locks are. Now let me start paying more attention to the darker areas. In here, where there's a shadow, and that's where a big, there's a big gap where the locks are. So I'm gonna darken here especially. This is really just to continue my guide and give you an idea where to start. I think I'm gonna use my, um, my soft pastel pencil to get this one done as well, so. shadow parts and again drawing the just make sure the camera's on again I'm drawing the um the dress again make sure everything's in its rightful place when I started this drawing I had no idea how I was gonna do it I still I only really have a little idea how I'm going to do it. I'm sure if I, as I go along, if I begin to struggle or I realise uh, another way that I'll be able to do it quicker, I will just try and adapt to that. Okay. Now, that's quite, is this, where's the gap? See, look how different I drew them before. Okay, now I'll have that come from here. Just realized there was two there i didn't draw the others therefore i put the line in the wrong place but that's fine just correct it i know it looks really rough but um hopefully as we go it will start to look better 
hopefully. That's all I can tell you right now. <laughs> There's no guarantees in this art life, as you probably know. I would like to believe that this will not get thrown away and it's gonna come out perfect. Speak that into existence. dive in with some soft pastel, extra soft pastel. Now, these are the darkest parts, so I'm gonna go over those and see if I can spread a little bit of the pastel elsewhere. Just roughly. I need to get another one of these out. Just got a tiny bit in there with some masking tape around it. It seemed to last me a long time, so I don't have no reason. Oh, wow, look at that. Spoke too soon, Marie. Why did you open your mouth? Oh, God, I'm still working. Listen, waste not, want not, yeah? Ah! It's going to make me messy. I've got a bin here. Let's see what I can do with that. Hold up. Wait a minute. There we go. Make it work, Marie. Uh, hopefully now I'm not ruining the picture just to save that little bit that's stuck in there now, so that's really good. Let's just use it to go over these a little bit. Uh, guys, this was not the plan, okay? I just don't want to waste this. This stuff is gold dust. Okay, hold on, where's the hoover? I don't think she went. No, I'm gonna go. No, I don't want to. Let me get the hoover. Give me a second, guys. <laughs> I didn't want to leave all of that down, uh, but I didn't want to pick it all up, so there is still some on there. Ooh. Sip my coffee. Okay, let's see now if I haven't messed it up already again. Should I use a new one or an old one? I just went and got some Johnson's ones yesterday, so I'm gonna dive in with the Johnson's. Now, what I'm gonna do now is just, um, see that's what i thought i wasn't able to put it in the right place because i was concentrating too much on it falling off but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just blend it all the way around i want to do it quite lightly because in certain areas i'm going to have to lighten like this one here and there's that little curl that i love Nice effect. I think this is going to work out really well. Yeah, I hope this is going to come out perfect. But um, let me not jinx it. I'll just blend this in really good here because this is a darker area. It's quite annoying with these nails on because I can't really hold it and do it the way I want to.
all laid down. Now all I need to do is just use my eraser and create those lighter areas. And I think I'm gonna fast forward through this bit. I think I'll just start first. So I'm just gonna highlight, this part here is a lot that's going down. There's gonna be lighter areas and darker areas. So I'm just gonna fast forward this a bit.
gone over all of the lighter areas to try and get an idea where the locks are. Uh, I think everything's in place now. I'm going to go over it again. But this time, what I'm going to do, where I've highlighted the areas that the light's shining on, I'm now going to darken the opposite side and lay down the black um, to add that depth in between each lock and to um, make the lock stand out in its place. So I'm going to do that now. This has taken quite a while, but we'll get there.
This is a Chucky Beat production. 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 production.